Holy shit, that was a fucking trip. Mandy. So Mandy is actually the name of my childhood dog, funny enough. But this Mandy is a movie starring Nicolas Cage and would, uh, how to describe this one? Very long psychedelic acid trip back to the 80s story short. Nicolas Cage and his wife or girlfriend, whichever. They live in the middle of nowhere in the woods, which is always a bad recipe in a movie. Something bad's gonna happen to you if those are your living conditions. Then a creepy evil cult gets a hold of him and then kills her, and then Nicolas Cage is out for revenge. Again, very long LSD field trip short. And is this movie totally cashing in on the 80s nostalgia porn way that's hitting the world? Yeah, that wave is straight up real right now because everyone's like today sucks I want to go back to when it didn't suck funny enough people have always sucked You're not gonna find a decade or time where they didn't that said I always enjoy some 80s nostalgia But it can't be all there is to a movie and as fucked up weird as this movie is it's not all there is to this movie This movie's actually quite layered. It's fun to think about it's fun after the movie's over to think about all right What did that mean was that a meaning for something else and you look into it and you go down the rabbit hole and you're like Oh, yeah, apparently but really this is Nicolas Cage in the pocket This is where he shines because the movie's absurd Nicolas Cage is absurd It just totally worked his absurdity only amplifies the absurd movie and symbiotically this absurd movie only amplifies Nicolas Cage When is it really worked if this movie was made for anyone else? I'd be totally surprised and is this movie a fueled bloodbath? Absolutely. However, keeping your expectations in check, because I had a lot of people like, you need to see Mandy, you need to see Mandy, please see Mandy. So I finally saw Mandy and I was like, all right, so it's not exactly that for most of the movie. It's a trip for most of the movie, but the revenge carnage you might be coming for doesn't really come into play until well into the second half of the movie. In that, there are some artsy fartsy ass people out there I know who like the artsy fartsy shit in here. The slow burn, the crawl, those moments where someone looks over at someone else and the music's playing and this tear comes out and I'm like, oh fuck. This is why I don't watch a lot of indies, because I just roll my eyes at that shit. I just do. I can't help it. I'm like, stop it. It just seems indulgent as shit. It's like the director's like, oh yeah, like all over my face. I'm like, oh, let's get to the blood. But it has its carnage. It has its sick ass twisted villains in it too. Not just the cult leader because he's a weirdo. It's funny. I was like, is that fucking Thomas Wayne from Batman Begins? Totally is. But there are these evil biker demon things. Like they're the thing in here where I was like, pretty sure this movie's not really telling a story about human beings. I mean, Nicolas Cage human being, but these aren't people. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that they're demons. Or at least as demon as someone who doesn't really have a budget and wants to tell a story that's essentially Mad Max fuck the album cover of an 80s death metal band. And it's always fun to see them bite it at the hands of crazy Nicolas Cage. Again, in the second half of the second half of the movie. I just don't want people coming back to my comment section saying I said it was like Mad Max Fury Road. It was super octane the entire time. No, it's like first Mad Max, original Mad Max. The movie was a unique experience. I could totally say that. First half of this movie, I was like, where the fuck is this going? And then by the second half, I fell into it, I was like, okay. I get it. Then I was able to slip into it and just have a good time with it. Guys, in the end, I enjoyed this movie. I'm gonna say what a lot of people did not tell me. This movie's not for everybody. Sometimes the pace doesn't always pick up. Sometimes scenes just <laughs> seem like they last forever. But I really love the nuance. I love the tone. I love the fact that as the movie progresses and Nick Cage goes down the precipice of madness, all the neon colors start becoming more pronounced. And by the end of the movie, <laughs> you're in a neon bulb. I committed a huge transgression in this movie that I didn't know was gonna be a transgression. And that was I watched this movie sober. I'm not talking about alcohol. I'm talking about weed. You gotta be fucking Hi. I have a rule, don't do that shit when I'm watching a movie because it'll just impede my judgment. Unless I reviewed a movie in which you hated the review and you don't agree with it, in which case, yeah, sure. Just go ahead and believe I was hot. But this movie straight up when I was watching, I was like, you are meant to watch this stone. Not advocating drug use. If you don't do that shit, that's cool. Good on you. Not condoning or condemning. I'm just saying it's real. This is the reality of the situation here. So if you smoke weed, take edibles, whatever, I found the movie for you. Enjoy. This is where my rating system, you have to remember, it's medicinal. I'm telling you just the facts of the matter. I'll say Mandy was a good time, no alcohol required. And even better if you're a little fucking high. Yeah, now it's a party. Again, just say it. All right, so Mandy, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more.